Hi guys, I'm back and um, we're going to do uh, a little experiment. So I have my paints from yesterday which all contain silicone and I have a new batch. Oops, and I see I have a little leak in my cup. Got to fix it. You can't see it, but there's a little, see that? There's a little hole in the cup, so I have to fix that. So first I'm going to uh, pour a, uh, I'm going to try to do a feather thing, but I'm going to use the paint that has no silicone in it. And the mix is a uh, pouring medium, about, let's say, 30% pouring medium, a little bit of gloss medium, and Floetrol. That's the first one. But there's no silicone in here. So that's what we're going to try and do first. That's enough. And let's see how this works. So I'm going to raise it up a little bit. I'm going to have this corner raised so that we can see what happens here. And I'm doing it very carefully. Wait until some more colors pop out. And I'm sort of tilting different ways so that the whole canvas is filled. That's enough of it, I guess. Now, um, I'm going to make it run over the edges, of course. And I'm going to let it run down here. I think we'll push most of it off so that we keep that nice orange look. That is kind of nice. I think I can live with this. It's kind of different. Just pulling it down a little bit over the edge here that I don't have to tilt it that way anymore. Then we're going to tilt it this way. and pull it over and up here I'm going to give it a little cover the corner that's it now I see one thing uh, that is very important with um, doing pores like this these kind of feather pores the most important important bit is that you don't have bubbles in it because I can see a lot of bubbles in my painting so the best thing that you can do is mix your paint, put a lid on it and let it stand for the next day that all the bubbles are out because there's a lot of bubbles. And if I am going to torch it, you'll see that all those little bubbles will release the color underneath. I'll show it to you up close in a bit. So this is something that you want to think about when you do one of these paintings. Now all the bubbles, as you can see, it's totally flat, but see what happened? Those are all little air bubbles. And that's what you get when you, uh, when you don't let the paint sit long enough. Now it's not totally something that you're thinking, okay, it's, uh, it ruined the painting. It's not that, but sometimes when you do feather pours, I think what you want to go for is nice and smooth uh, feather, feather things like these little patterns that are in there. And you don't want all those little pinholes popping up, but you know, there will always be people that kind of like that. Now I still have a lot of paint left in my, as you can see in there, can you see all those little air bubbles? So it's really important that you let those air bubbles pop before you start to pour. And right now 
We're going to let it pour on the paper. That is kind of nice. Let's see what happens while we spread it. That is really pretty. Let's spread it some more. See, this is the advantage of doing something on paper because then you can just, you know, fold the paper and because this is the most interesting bit, you can sort of make sure that that gets spread wider when you fold the paper like this. That is really pretty. Let's see. If we can. But there you go again with all the little air bubbles. And there were a lot in it. See how that all those little things pop and make sort of all those little pinholes. I don't like the pinholes. Really, I don't. So um, let's do something to this. It's too bad because I really like that. You know, if I were to take out a piece like, of, you know, like this for a pendant, that would have been pretty, but not with those little holes in it. That just doesn't do it for me. So let's do something different. I'm going to put it down here. And I'm going to drop some blue in here. Now we have some blue and I'm taking just a normal kitchen spoon and we're going to swipe it. Let's make sure that it's nice and clean and smooth. And that's how we'll have to do. And of course there is no silicone in it so that's going to make it a little bit um, difficult to make something pretty. Let's put some silicone on top. That's it. And let's do that again. Now let's see if something's going to pop up. There are some tiny, tiny cells, as you can see when I hold it up close. But I, I'm not seeing something that I think, oh yeah, that's cute. That's something I'd like to keep. So I'm going to put another layer on top, but this has silicone in it. This is from yesterday. And I'll show you the difference. Oh, you're a little bit out of focus there. There we go. And a little bit of the Naples yellow with titanium. There we go. And let's do that again. Let's clean off that spoon. And we're going to do that again. Loving those colors. And what I'm doing is just checking out if there's something there that uh, that would really be cute in a pendant. And there we go. Now I kind of like this bit here. That would be really pretty. Let me get you in focus here. See that? That is kind of nice. Let's see if we could spread it out a little bit. Sometimes you want to help it, you know, with a little bit of gravity to spread it out. That's okay. And then a palette knife to smooth it out a little bit here. I think I might, maybe I want to frame this. Let's see. That would be pretty. And again, you're out of focus. Normally this thing takes care of the focus. Just don't know why it doesn't do it right now. It's been acting weird lately, so I might have to buy a, a new iPad pretty soon. The good thing is that my husband, he can um, 
you know, when I ditch this one, he, my husband will use it because um, he just uses it, you know, to do Facebook stuff like that. But I need a good one because um, I video with this this iPad. I do all the videos, so that might be the reason that I need a good one. Okay, that's a little, that turned a little muddy there, but I'm guessing for the purpose of framing, that'll be okay. So I'm going to put that on here. Just make it a little bit bigger because the, the main focal point is uh, this little bit here in the middle. And it doesn't really matter if you have a little bit of muddy paint along the side. That'll work. Just let this come down. Now let me see. Yeah. Let me clean this off a little bit here. There we go. So now we have, at least we have something that is going to be uh, nice when we frame it. See that here? That's pretty. Could go up a little bit get a little bit more blue in it. So we're going to keep this one. And I'll give you one more close-up before I put it away. There it is. And I'd really like to um, um, tell you guys that I really enjoy pouring on this paper. Um, this is, uh, of course, before I get all the questions, this is Kodak Extra Life. And someone said, just buy paper, just buy, buy print paper. And that's not the case. This paper has a plastic layer on it, so it, it'll keep totally flat. As you can see, it's still flat. And the paint will be on top, and it won't uh, go into the paper to make it all buckle and warp and do funny stuff that, you, you know, that's just not interesting uh, and very difficult to frame. So as you can see here, it's still perfectly flat and that's what why I uh, use this if you can't buy this then just go for the Yupo Yupo is a little bit more expensive but if you are uh, planning on making things to frame in those cute little mats um, it's well worth the money it's it's really it really is because you can cut your Yupo into uh, small squares and um, that'll be perfect just let me do this a little bit bigger here now we have the whole thing covered that's it okay guys um, oh wait a minute let me put this away because I want to show you the canvas again the one I just did I am running 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 okay now look at this and this is caused only by all the air bubbles. So that's kind of interesting. So if you like this sort of a effect, that's okay. But if you're totally not into all those little cells, and these cells, they are not from the silicone because there was no silicone in here whatsoever. So um, this all happened because of the little pinholes. The pinholes went away and went a little bit bigger because there's Floetrol in the mix. So that makes it move, you know, uh, Floetrol is just something that makes the paint flow for longer. So that's why you're seeing the, all those little pinholes getting a little bit bigger and sort of merging into each other. Might be nice for people who like it, but I'm not too fond of it. So we'll put this one away, let it dry, we'll see. We might even come back in and do something on top of it if I ever get sacked and have a lot of time. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. See, because I'm already, um, you know, a lot of people get really upset when they, um, when they are, you know, hearing that uh, a company is in, in a big or, uh, reorganization thing. But I'm thinking, you know, if it happens, it happens. And um, what I'll be doing is uh, really focusing on my painting. I'm going to be putting up a lot of paintings because I have like hundreds of paintings, but I haven't varnished them yet. I don't have time to do that. 
That's why usually when someone buys a painting, um, I tell them that it'll take a while for me to uh, first let it dry and then varnish and then send it off. But a lot of people say, I don't care. Um, as long as, uh, as long as it gets here, that's okay. So that's what I usually do. Um, I varnish when people buy them. Okay, guys, thanks for this little bit. I'll see you back in a minute. Bye-bye. Love you all to pieces.